Hi everybody, this is Eric, and this is my new update to the motor scooter. So the main new things that I did, which I talked about in the last video, are this PVC piping at a different angle, and that makes my handlebars instead of straight at an angle, and the suspension. So most of the stuff is the same. I actually put uh, bolt. I bolted the bucket to the back because it kept sliding forward. I had a new pole for the seat inside of that white one. New kickstand made out of aluminum. Um, yeah, so most of the stuff is still the same. I put my key switch right there. And I made a new pole to pull William on, on a skateboard out of aluminum and some rope. So the main thing I want to talk about in this video is the suspension. So the suspension was made out of, uh, I think this is steel tubing and this is aluminum. So the main idea is the aluminum going into the steel tubing with springs. So we brought a whole bunch of springs and there's small springs and big springs. But the small springs compress better because the big springs wouldn't hold enough weight. So I put five small springs about an inch big, like this big, in each one of these tubes. And then I put two wooden blocks in there and in there, at the bottom and at the top, so that when the aluminum pushed up and down, it pressed on the wooden blocks and compressed the springs. So these are just to hold it together. This is a plywood. We put plywood and then liquid nails around the outsides, here and here, and on the bottom too. So plywood, we use plywood here because it wouldn't crack. This one isn't plywood, but I already made it out of um, two by or whatever, two one by two. So I just decided to use that. So and then here again is three layers of plywood, all screwed together, with the two aluminum poles glued into here. And that so basically it's two parts. It's this pole with the plywood and the two aluminum parts, and the bottom half is just this, this, and the two steel poles. So this third pole in the middle here was needed for strength. So what we did was we took another aluminum, I mean steel pole, and it goes through this metal pole up to about here, and it fits perfectly into here, and comes down through this hole, and it's loose here, and it's there's a little groove right there. It's not all the way through, and we just glued a wooden pole inside of this one and screwed it through so this stays here. So this pole is screwed to the bottom but it goes loose through here. So that allowed it so that it wouldn't keep bending forward because before that all that was supporting this, all that was keeping this from going out was these aluminum poles. And to make that stronger we stuck wooden poles in the aluminum. So basically most of the things are filled with wood to make them stronger. This, this, and the end of this. So, before I let William try it out to show you how the suspension works, I'll tell you about the PVC piping. So before we had, um, it goes straight up and then a 90 degree angle, and then goes straight again, and then this T. So what we did this time was we made it we used a 60 degree angle and a 22 and a half degree angle to come up with more like an 80, what, 82 degree angle, almost 83. That way, instead of being straight up, it'd be a little out, so that way the suspension would take it out, you know, it would take the bumps easier, because if it were straight, every time you hit a bump, the wheel would just go flying back. So the angle gives it a little bit more strength to take in the bumps, and so it doesn't crack. And then this is the pole that I had earlier to support the PVC piping because I can't stand on it. So this is just, I mean, I couldn't stand on it without that pole because it wasn't strong enough. So this PVC piping, what we did to f make this pole fit into the PVC piping T is we found these two, like, I don't know what you call them, edge pieces kind of, on, put them on the top and the bottom. And then we found another pipe right there that fit right around this. So this pipe we put inside of this and this. And these pieces hold that inside pipe tight. And then this pole just slides around into that pole. But it was a tiny bit too loose, so I don't know if you can see, but we added layers of tape to make it a little bit tighter. And then I just 
The handlebars are a little bit different. It's hard to tell, but I cut out a notch out of the metal, the round metal on both sides, square notch kind of. And then I placed my handlebars in and then came up with this end piece of metal bracket and screwed two holes in it and put bolts. So that's bolted down really good. And then same brake, same throttle. The wires come up from there, are mounted to there, and then go up there. Okay. Oh, and then there's my key. I couldn't put it up here because I thought it would make it too weak like it was last time. So instead I decided to put it right there. It works really well. And another thing I did, it's really hard to tell, but this thing right here used to only have these two bolts but now it has four it had on these two sides but it started to lean a little bit like this forward and back it can move so I bolted down the front and the back with two more bolts so most of the other stuff is the same so William here you can I'll let him try and then he'll record me because I'm a little heavier okay so William you can get on and you see how it goes down and then it pops right back up again we had to add a little bit of grease because you can kind of tell that this is shaped, that it's the aluminum is kind of being shaved off by the steel. So we put some grease in there so it would go down a little smoother. So, oh, I forgot to say one more thing. So we are trying to come up with a way to attach the wheel to these two steel uh, pipes. So I found this bracket, metal bracket, and I bent it around. The each pole so it starts about there and it goes all the way around and then comes out and then I bolted it with two bolts through the middle but it was still not very strong so what I did was I added a second really really thick one right here a really thick bracket and used the same bolt holes that I already had so same with this side aluminum bracket and drilled it I mean bolted it to the steel and then I had this other steel bracket to reinforce it with the same bolt holes. So then the axle just goes right through there. It works out pretty well. I was afraid it wasn't going to work, but it works really well. So, yeah, William's, William helped me with this a lot. Okay, so William, you can kind of get on again to sh show. Are you doing it? Here, let me switch so you can get a little Wait, wait. Okay. Oh, I forget it. So you just hold right there. Get get low one right there. So at first I put a little WD-40 in, but then my dad told me I should use grease. So it works pretty well. But when I get on, it barely goes down, which isn't bad. Cause that way it still has room to go up and down for the bumps. So one more time. pretty good. It worked. I test tried it and it went pretty well. And then this bolt that I used to reinforce this, it used to be right there. You can see that hole. But I had to move it up so that the angle wouldn't be so so much of an angle so it would be more direct and straight. So yeah, I think that's the difference. The next thing I'm going to be doing is hopefully almost rebuilding the scooter to add two or three gears on the back. So come over here. So in the next update, over here, you should see this bracket, there'll be three of them in different sizes like a bike. I'll have a chain tensioner here and a bike gear shifter right above it. So it's going to take a lot of work, it'll be much harder, but I'm going to try to do it. That way I can have torque and speed and switch gears. This is the thing I built for William, it's nice, and that attaches to here with an, another rope and then I before I bolt I didn't have this bolt so like I said it just slide up and now that I bolted it stays on really well this just fits in right here there we go okay now we're gonna take it for a test try so let me can stop the video here we go 